Hey guys, what's going on uh, with the four pole machine? Why does it run slower? Well, if you think about it, whoop, I'm going to change to my red pen. If I had a four pole machine, okay, so let's say, you know, this is two pole and it's north, south, north, south, north, south, like that, right? North, 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 at 60 hertz. Well, a four pole machine will look like this, okay guys? So it'll have the other two poles in there. And instead of going from north here, to north here to north here it's going to go from north here to north here to north here to north here and the reason it runs at half the speed is because instead of doing 180 degrees you know in you know in one uh alternation it's going to actually do only 90 degrees okay so it's going to take twice the frequency to produce the same speed uh same sync speed or at the same frequency, it's going to run at half the sync speed. Okay, guys? But if I uh, want to know about current, or I, you know, if we want to try to figure out what's going on with current with an AC motor, you know, most people know, or most of you guys know, that an AC motor will draw hardly any current when it's under no load. And then as I load it up, uh, the current through the stator will increase. In other words, the motor current will increase. Now, why is that? Because look, these windings have nothing to do with the rotor. Why is it that the current through these windings increase as the motor is mechanically loaded? Well, the reason for that is because really an AC motor is a rotating transformer, okay? It's got a primary coil, and a secondary coil. Now the secondary coil is the rotor coil, okay? And it's not a winding, it's these aluminum bars. But just like every transformer, guys, if I have an increase in current in the secondary, I will have an increase in current in the primary, right? So if this is 10 amps and I got two amps here and I increase this to 20 amps, I get four amps here. That's how all transformers work. And that's how an AC motor works too. And so what's going to happen if I have this machine running at no load is this thing is going to be slipping a lot, okay, guys, because it's really easy to rotate, okay? And so because it's not slipping a lot, there isn't a lot of current induced into these bars, and because that current is low, the other winding in this machine is also going to be low. But as soon as I put a mechanical load on this machine, the first thing it's going to do is start slipping more. Okay, it's going to slow down. Now it's going to slow down, and that means that the difference between the sync speed and the actual speed is up, which means more of the flux is crossing these bars, which means more voltage introduced to those bars, which means more current flowing into those bars. And when you get an increase in current in these bars, you are going to get a corresponding increase in current in the, you know, stator winding, okay? And so under no load, this thing might draw 2 amps, and under full load, it might draw 10 amps, okay? Now, the question is, you know, how far can I load an AC motor up? Well, if you look at the nameplate for any AC motor, it's going to give you a bunch of information. It's going to give you the horsepower, right? It's going to give you the voltage. It's going to have the FLA, which is the full load amps, right? And then it's going to give you the RPM. And it's really important to remember that all AC motor nameplates, all those numbers are full load numbers, okay? So if your nameplate says 5 horsepower, 1750 RPM, uh, I don't know, 5 horsepower, um, you know, uh, 25 amps, all right, then What that means is when the motor is running at 5 horsepower, in other words, the is connected to a 5 horsepower load, it's going to run at the nameplate speed, 1750. In other words, it's going to be you know, slipping 50 RPM, okay? And it's going to be drawing 25 amps. Now, a 
five horsepower motor, this has nothing to do with how much horsepower it can produce, okay? Whenever you see a normal, uh, an AC motor nameplate, you have to remember that its rated horsepower has nothing to do with how much horsepower it can produce, okay? It has to do with how much it can produce all day long without overheating, okay? So if you have a five horsepower motor and you put a 10 horsepower load on it, it will drive it, okay? It will try to drive it. What it'll be doing is running at less than 1750 RPM and drawing way more than 25 amps, okay? And because what's happening is you're going to be slowing this down even more, causing even more current to flow, cause even more current flow in the stator winding. And the motor, if it's five horsepower and rated at 25 amps, will not be capable of driving that load for very long without, you know, burning down, right guys? So that is why all AC motors have to have, you know, something in the circuit to protect it from burning itself down, okay? And that's why there's always overloads included with the motor contactor, right? And that's why the overloads have to be set correctly. The motor is incapable of protecting itself from overcurrent. It doesn't care how much load you put on it. It will try to deliver it no matter, you know, it'll do whatever it takes, okay, to try to deliver the load uh, to try to drive the load, okay? And so in order to protect the motor from itself, you've going to put overloads in the uh, stator circuit here to, you know, if it goes over 25 amps for X amount of time, you know, plus 15% or whatever, it's going to go like, no, you can't drive that load anymore. All right, guys? So uh, that's why AC motors draw more current when they are under more load. It's basically because the current in the stator is increasing or rotor is increasing as you draw more load. And because that of that, the current in the stator also increases as you draw more load. Now, we're going to take a look. This is all in there, okay? If you look at... Uh, if you read all the information from Unit 5 Handout 2 about single, you know, um, resistance start induction run motor, guys, it talks about, you know, the current and what's going on with the machine. Um, and we haven't even talked about any of the particular types of start windings yet, and we're going to do that in a second. So come back for that, and we'll start talking about you know, how do we actually make this magnetic field in a single-phase motor rotate and not just alternate? Okay, guys, come back for that.